Hi guys, um, so I've been asked quite a few times on all different types of social media how I'm handling isolation, um, how I'm getting through my days, a um, few different things really and um, a couple of people have asked me um, those questions on social media and so um, together with Alice Green who um, was someone who suggested doing this little video we thought we would put together some questions from people who had been asking her on social media, do a little question box on Instagram and get uh, some questions together for me to hopefully help, maybe maybe just a little bit of clarity, maybe it's just nice to know that everybody's struggling at this time and it's you know a really difficult time for everybody um, being stuck in the house and so we thought it'd be really nice to put some questions together and um, answer those questions and I'm more than happy if this video goes down well to maybe address a few other things um, and hopefully you know help you get through this period a little bit easier so i've got some questions um on an email that we've uh, put together and i'll just go through them and answer them as best i can and hopefully you find them helpful so the first question is how do you maintain your fitness at this time well, um, it's obviously a little bit different for me now because I'm retired, but obviously being a professional athlete, I kind of still always want to keep a certain level of fitness. I want to stay healthy. I want to stay, you know, relatively lean. Um, so it's the best way for our bodies. So I guess it's about um, trying, to, trying to just do stuff that I enjoy, really. Um, obviously, that kind of goes um, with a lot of the programs that I've followed in the past. The things that I like to do, I can do a little bit more, and the stuff that I don't like to do, I can maybe do a little bit less. But in terms of uh, fitness and stuff at this time, I think you know when we're in the house so much, it's really important to get out every day, at least leave the house or go into the garden and get some fresh air. So if you can do that, that exercise outside, it's also you know really good for our brains and really good for our bodies. It mixes things up so. I've been doing a lot of outdoor circuits, mainly mainly body weight stuff. I've been trying to go on a few runs, um, you know, stay away from people, but kind of be in the outdoors, which is really nice, and breathe in some fresh air and find some new routes and try and look at it as a positive way to do things that I've that I've never really done before, and um, things that are a bit different. And um, so far, so good. I'm really enjoying it and putting some good sessions together. Uh, next question is favorite nutritious meals to stay fit and healthy at home so I'm not gonna lie I've been doing a fair bit of baking <laughs> while we've been in lockdown and particularly you know it takes quite a lot of time to bake so it's a good way to kind of pass the time and um, it's a really nice to be able to do that and to be able to you know dish them out leave them on people's doorsteps particularly the elderly that we've got around us so it's been really nice to do that um, but in terms of nutritious meals, I think for me personally, it's about trying to just really um, keep the protein content quite high and keep the carbohydrates down a little bit when I'm not training as, as much as I would like to um, or, or used to. So, you know, a lot of meals that are based kind of around, really had to play around with um, shishushka, which is kind of uh, poached eggs in a tomatoey sauce, so tasty. Um, I've got a really good um, website that I get the recipe off that I'll uh, put in the in the description below, which is brilliant. Um, had a little play around um, a couple of days ago with some carrot cake pancakes, which sound really sweet, but actually they were quite savoury in a way. Um, so the pancakes didn't feel like they were a treat so much, I and mean, you could just put whatever you wanted on top. And I went for what the recipe said which was a little bit of cream cheese and some walnuts and raisins and they didn't feel um, too unhealthy at all so um, you know just doing my best really to get um, a lot of salads in um, get I get an organic delivery so I'm um, using up a lot of vegetables that are in season a lot of salad and making sure that I'm really you know eating as much of that sort of stuff and um, using it up soups and you know getting salads going and really trying to get that nutritious sort of meal in but it's a really good time to just play around with a few different recipes and the worst that can happen is that you don't really like it so it's been quite good fun trying some of that stuff out and um, next question is favorite workouts you are doing at this time and um, 
So yeah, mainly just, um, I'd say circuits really. And I've been really enjoying um, putting some things on the YouTube channel um, doing the, all of the circuits and the mobility sessions, the hip openers, the, the glute workout, the um, actual full on circuits that I've been doing. And I've got a few more ideas coming up um, for a few more YouTube videos in the future. So I think because I've been videoing them and I've been trying to make them quite good good quality and to get the content good for the YouTube channel it's been quite exciting so I know even I was massively surprised the other day like my mum said she'd done the leg circuit that I did and I was I just thought it was brilliant so you know for anyone out there and you're struggling to do something you know for you then why not you know kind of put a video together and send it to a few of your friends and send it to your family members and be like hey I know you can't do much but it might be really nice to get this done so um, trying to find another reason for doing the workout would be would be pretty cool so it's not just kind of for you and it's not sort of boring um, but in terms of my favorite workouts then mainly circuits really and um, I'll be putting a few more on here as well um, next question is how do you mean good mental well-being when you're used to being so active um, well, I think that mental well-being is a really tough one, isn't it? It's it's very difficult if you live on your own. It's very difficult if um, you're used to getting out and about and you're very social. Um, I think the main thing is making sure that you trust, really try to get into a routine. I mean, that's that's what's what's so important for mental health in general. And I um, actually watched a clip on BBC News the other day on a, um, a captain of a submarine ship and I was thinking, wow, like, I can't actually think of anything worse than a submarine, um, you know, being so isolated on a submarine. And it was really interesting because he had his tips for being, um, you know, in isolation, basically. And the number one tip was you have to have routine and I think it's really, really important. I found it hugely helpful to make sure that I'm getting up at about the same sort of time every day and making sure that I'm going to bed at the same time every day. Um, I've got a dog, so it's it's obviously great to get up and get out of the house for a walk, but there'd be nothing to stop you doing that on your own if you haven't got a dog. Um, you know, making sure that um, I've got a little bit of structure, so get up, get out of the house with, with Woody the dog, um, come back generally sort of I have a smoothie for my breakfast and I drink that on the walk and then come back and try to have some eggs for my lunch which I really look forward to because I'm hungry by then and then generally sort of you know bake answer a few emails do a little bit of cleaning whatever I'm, I've got on that day I've been speaking to a few players trying to keep them you know um, you know motivated and just being here to chat to people as it's hard um, and then generally sort of have a workout with myself about four or five o'clock and then dinner and chill. Uh, TV um, goes on, you know, after dinner. So, you know, pretty much sticking to that every day and been really enjoying it. It's not really the positive of all of this is this will, I'll never get a chance to do this again. And none of us will. None of us will ever get a chance to kind of just be at home and to kind of get into that routine of what it is we're trying to do. And, um, you know, really stick to all the things that we want to do and that are important and, you know, there's a positive to come from some of this and that's kind of a slowing down of life, I think. Um, so the next question was, any books you are uh, reading right now? So generally I've read so many books over my career and um, I'm actually in the process of putting together my own book um, and I wanted in the book to put a list of every single kind of a book I've ever read which 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 kind of goes from um, you know spiritual self-help type books through to all sporting autobiographies and then books that are specifically designed to help you get better mentally things like The Inner Game and um, Think Like a Winner and um, The Chimp Paradox all of those things so I wanted to put a list of books in the back of my book that um, that I've read over the course of my career that had helped me in my squash. Like we're not talking Harry Potter mo novels, obviously, but we're talking um, you know books that in some way, shape, or form have helped me in my squash. And there was over a hundred books on that list, and I have read so much stuff. And it's so hard to probably measure how much that's actually helped me over my career. Um, so now I'm kind of on the off, off, off other side of that, and I'm actually just 
trying to read a, a few nice things, a few things that aren't making me think of sport. So, um, you know, I'm kind of reading a book at the moment called Ender's Game and I'm halfway through that and it's a kind of a little bit of a, um, you know, fun, it's a fun book. It's, I think it's a kind of children, like children's show, young adult book. And I, I really like all of that stuff. I like the Harry Potter novels and I find them really fun. So I'm reading that at the moment, but um, obviously I've read a lot um, in the past. So um, yeah, just, just kind of wanted to stay away from the squash side at the moment. But the next question is any books you would recommend reading? Um, so going on from that, there's, I wanted to do a whole different kind of uh, YouTube video on actual, actually books that I would recommend. So going from, um, you know, like I said, the sort of spiritual self-help books, I've probably read 30 of those type of books. So I wanted to do like a top five, but ones that kind of spring to mind straight away are Brené Brown, Daring Greatly, um, Michael Singer, Untethered Soul, Michael Neal, um, Inside Out Revolution, um, let me think, Eckhart Tolle, anything by Eckhart Tolle, but A New Earth is great. Um, those would be my like sort of spiritual self-helpy type books. Um, sporting autobiographies, um, for a long time Steve Backley's was up there for helping me and I actually haven't read it for so many years and I wonder if it would actually still be as good, but when I was a young pro at 20 um that book influenced me so much um diana nyad um long distance um open water swimmer unbelievable swam from um florida to cuba um with box jellyfish and you know if you ever feel like you need some mental strength just read that um same with chrissy wellington iron iron man champion ridiculous training and if you ever think that you can't train hard or you're tired just read a book like that um they're probably up there as as some of my best kind of autobiograph um autobiography books to read um and then kind of like the actual mental kind of help books that have really helped me are definitely relentless by tim grover um that's up there um, quite heavy though um, but you know kind of gives you a bit of a kick up the bum too so I loved that um, The Inner Game is 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 great is a great book um, Winning Ugly you know there's there's so many um, so yeah hopefully at some point we'll do a little bit more of an in-depth review of some of those but there's there's a few names in, of books that you could definitely start to look on Amazon at and look to get um, Next question, so how have you managed with the eating habits in this quarantine? I can't help snacking in brackets. Um, so yeah, I think that that's, that's generally um, the, the struggle, isn't it, at the moment? And I think I did read a book on another book, uh, Paul McKenna, um, on some, it was some sort of body image book on Paul McKenna, who's obviously the hyp hypnotherapist. Um, but one thing always massively sticks out from that book that I read, and it was like, if you were to just stop before you ate and actually said to yourself, how hungry am I on a level of one to 10? If you're not at a seven, then you shouldn't eat. <laughs> and it sounds quite stupid, but when you're um, going into the fridge and you're actually a bit like, am I hungry or am I just bored? Then I think that that's, you know, kind of a big thing. And they always say as well, don't they? If you're hungry, drink a pint of water and then see if you are actually still hungry in, you know, 10 minutes time after that. So I think it's also the routine. I think when you stick to that routine, I have my smoothie on my walk with the dog and then I get back and I look forward to my eggs. Then before you know it, you know, kind of really thinking, right, I might have a little a little coffee and some a snack or a, a little biscuit or something that I've baked at about three o'clock and then I do my training. Um, got into that routine really. So you're not, I'm like, oh, I don't want to eat too soon or too much before my training at five-ish because I'm, I obviously don't want it to be sitting heavy. So that's a really good way to kind of just structure your, structure your day so that you're not eating kind of randomly through the day as well. Um, next question is, what is your favorite activity to do to pass the time? Um, so I've got into adult coloring books actually. Um, I've got, got it here, um, I'm just in the process of doing it. And this is actually a really cool coloring book because um, I've got two or three, but this one specifically is actually cards. 
So you colour the card and then obviously you can write it and send it. And I have it here, so um, the card, and obviously as you can see I've coloured the front and little bits on the inside, um, which, is, which is all well and good, but it's the envelopes that you'll be really impressed with. And I haven't actually started to tackle this yet because it's blank at the moment and it's so detailed. But when someone opens the envelope, um, which obviously I've coloured the part, started to colour on the outside, when they open the envelope, um, they get hit with all of this colour. So it's really, it's really time consuming in terms of, you know, an hour can just fly by um, and then you're left with a great thing that you can actually put in the post to a friend or a family member, especially at this time who you can't see and just say that, that, you, that you're thinking of them. Uh, and, and while I've been doing that, I've been listening to audiobooks as well or podcasts and things like that. So it's kind of like, you know, I wouldn't just sit on the couch and watch an audiobook. I would uh, listen to an audiobook. I would find that a bit weird. So, but while I'm doing that and it's just going in, so um, that's that's my favourite thing to do, and also the baking, like I've already said. Um, next question is, where's the first place you'll go out to eat after this lockdown? Oof, the choices. But we just, we just have a really nice, good quality English pub about 10, 15 minute drive away and we're up there a lot. They, they allow dogs, so we take we'll do with us. And I think it'd just be really nice to almost get back to that normality. Um, they have a great gin menu, so I look forward to um, having a little gin when I get up there as well. And next question. What is the best way to keep accountable of your food? Find it hard to know what to eat and don't want to lose control of my diet. Um, so just probably the points that I've touched upon already, um, trying to make sure that you're eating eating for the amount of exercise that you're doing and try to really link it in with how hard the sessions are. And if you're not doing an awful lot, try to eat more protein than carbohydrate. My Fitness Pal is a brilliant app. I used that loads while I was training. Um, you can set yourself daily calorie targets, daily fat targets, and you know then you know when you input the food that you eat and you know that you're not going above that. Um, I loved that app and it just keeps you really accountable if that's what you're actually looking for. Um, and I guess just um, just eating when you're hungry. I think that'd be the main thing, like we've already said. Um, so next question. Are you missing playing squash at the moment? Yes, uh, everybody is, I think. I, I was unfortunately injured mid-October and I was just starting to get back on court when kind of all this happened and dislocated kneecap and torn MCL so yeah really missing it um really feeling like you know out like I'm worried that all the stuff I did on my knee and all my rehab and everything is going to kind of be undone um but like a lot of us out there you kind of just got to go with the flow a bit and do what you can and use what you've got available to you and hope that when things come good again you're going to have enough time to build things back up again so yeah, I'm, not only am I missing it, like missing it right now, but I've been missing it since October and we're so excited to start to get back on court. Next question. Do you think I need to do all the ball skills you see online to keep my squash coordination, like hitting the ball against the wall, etc.? Um, I think it probably depends on the level that you are. I think if you're a high level, like a pro, for example, or um, you know someone who is a very high level, then maybe hitting a ball on a wall is is kind of neither, neither here nor there. You could not pick up a racket for 10 years and probably still do that. But if you're a beginner's level and you're, or you're, you're a young junior, um, then, then yeah, absolutely. Then go out, practice, get fast with the volleys, um, use, use going up and down the grip, um, do, some of this, do some of the fun stuff, like do some target stuff, like, like they've all been doing on social media, um, you know, hit targets off, you know, in the garden or around the house without breaking stuff and just have a play around and make it fun. And if you want to do it, do it. And if you don't, don't, because you'll never get an opportunity to have this sort of break again. So if you want to do some fun stuff and you can start, find a quiet kind of building with a wall, like, why not go down and have some fun? But if you're actually just thinking, do you know what, I'm really glad of the break and I could do with, you know, some time off squash and you know, want to kind of build back up again. Um, I don't think things are going to change like instantly. They're not just going to go from lockdown to everybody's free to go. There'll be a steady sort of process to that, I think, where it will be like we can start to move around a little bit more without opening squash clubs again. So hopefully, 
you'll start to know like okay next week or in two weeks time I'm going to be able to go on course maybe that's the time to start to build in some of the coordination stuff and and don't forget as well like you know watching squash and thinking about squash and doing your ghosting and your training and doing the movement patterns that's all kind of practice really and the timing on this actual squash court with the ball will will come back within a week it depending on how much you're willing to get soloing once the courts are open so I wouldn't massively worry about that. Just do kind of what you really feel like doing at the moment. Um, how do you manage to keep a routine straight structure in your life? I think obviously we've touched upon that already, just having that routine every day and trying to stick to it and um, making sure that I stick, I stick to things that I like to do as well. Um, I'm worried about not training at this time and coming back to squash and playing really badly. I know it's a long way off, but do you have any advice on how to cope with this? Ooh, <laughs> sounds like quite a negative question already, to be honest. So probably start by trying to think a little bit more positively. Um, you know, the one thing that we really all have to realize is that everybody is in the same situation. It's fair. And I think I was even saying this um, to Danny the other day that, it would be really, really unfair, wouldn't it, that in some parts of the world they weren't on lockdown. And you knew that, okay, the tour was cancelled or the junior tour or whatever it is you're doing, the box leagues at the local club, it was all cancelled, but there were some parts of the world that were still allowed to hit a ball on a court. I think that would feel like it was really unfair. But the one thing to know is, is that, you know, 90, if not 95, 100% of the world are all in this same situation. No one can hit a ball. So when you're going back on about, you know, I'm worried about not training at this time, coming back and playing really bad, then in terms of playing, that's the same for everybody. And the fitness is kind of like then who adapts the best, who, who um, takes on the challenge of, the, of, what, of what we've been dealt basically. And that is kind of doing the sessions that are gonna be the best for you and, and genuinely thinking about your weaknesses and your strengths and working on some of those while you're actually you know away from the squash court and that's as much or as little as what you'd actually you know really be thinking about and I've had a lot of conversations with pros over the last few weeks where you know it's been hard almost for them to like stop training and I, I kind of have given it the attitude of it's the end of the season what are you training for it's done at the end of the season you would have a holiday so take a holiday all right you're at home but put the rackets away, put the training away. Because how are you gonna stay fresh in December, January, February, almost a year from now when the tour is like thick and fast, junior tour, whatever, whether it's box leagues or you know, um, your local um, county league, whether it's PSA, how, what are you training for? You know, you'd always have a holiday, you'd always have that mental come down. It's a time to just, you know, stay fit, stay healthy because you want to do the sessions that you want to do that you would never normally get to do. Do a session with a, with a family member for who's in your household and let them run it and do something fun or do a challenge and, you know, really embrace that kind of like, if, if they just said it's, it's, due, it's May and it's the end of the season and like take a holiday, do what you want, your attitude right now would be very different and I think personally the balance is going to be, um, between tra training hard and being able to um, also be fresh when the season comes so it's not necessarily worrying about playing really badly you know everybody could be playing badly at the start of the season everybody could be playing brilliantly at the start of the season but how are you going to actually personally manage um, playing well in December, January, February, when, when everyone else is fatiguing and tired because they actually haven't thought about the fact that from now, 12 months time, the season is still gonna be going and there's not gonna be basically an off season. This is the off season. So it's like just shifting your mentality a little bit really and be like, okay, you know, in the grand scheme of it, is squash such a big thing? I think we've all realized there's a lot more going on in the world than squash. It's a really small sport and sport in general is so small. I think it's shown that this virus has shut everything down. And ultimately, you know, it's about getting life into perspective and enjoying it and being healthy and having a good mental well-being. And, you know, if you start the season off poorly, you start the season off poorly, you might finish it brilliantly. So it's sort of not really worrying about that. It's about ticking over, doing the sessions you want and know that at some point we will get 
a, at least a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks notice to, okay, things are starting to change and then you can ramp it up as much as you actually want then. Um, so it's just get it's just keeping yourself you know healthy fit and healthy as as anyone would be even if they weren't a squash player uh, so I hope that helps quite passionate about that at the moment and I see a lot of people training and I'm like what are you training for <laughs> um, aside, aside from obviously being healthy and wanting to keep a level of fitness um, so next one I haven't got any uh, gym access or equipment and I'm scared I'll lose strength during this time is there anything you can recommend doing with my training I mean Obviously, everything I've just said is is kind of linked in with that. But if you are training, like I am, because I want to be fit and I want to be healthy and I want to eat some of the stuff that I'm baking, then it's really important that you just do what you can. And there's loads of really good sessions out there. I've put quite a few sessions up and I'm going to carry on putting a few more sessions up that are done with body weight. You know, I've seen people, you know, you can do lunges with, you know, a a bottle of um, washing up powder above your head, a box of washing up, washing up powder above your head, a big two litre bottle of water. I think a litre of water is a kilo in weight. So two litres is two kilos. You've probably got some garden furniture or something. You can always find a little bit of weight um, from somewhere. And if you are, if you can't, I think for strength particularly, as this question asks for, I think when you're doing kind of like a Bulgarian split squat or a split squat or a squat, I think you can start to really build your strength by doing those reps slower. So I know for my knee, trying to recover my knee and get some work into that and keep my strength. And the physios recommended doing a Bulgarian split squat, which is um, feet apart, foot on the floor, back foot. So you're in a lunge type position, back foot up on kind of like a stair or a chair or something like that. And you just squat down, um, squats down so that your kind of bum comes down and back up. And you go down for four and back up for four and it's like a bit of a burner you know rather than just one up and one, up, up up and down on one second it's down four seconds up four seconds and do like six to eight reps and that really builds strength and helps you keep strength so i think that's a really good thing we can do uh, are there any particular squash matches you remember well that you'd like uh, that you'd recommend to go back and watch um well i'd obviously have my personal favorites um British Open final 2013 which was my first big win um, world championships but actually I don't think they were my best squash obviously 2013 2014 is kind of a long time ago now and I absolutely uh, loved my match against Norel Tayeb in the 2018 British Open I think it was a quarter final I won that match it was a great match I was really proud of myself there um, I won the British Open in 2017 and I'd put in um, such a lot of work for that and for it to all come good. I just even, you know, if anyone's interested in kind of watching my route through to that final and how I played and backed up, that was as a tournament in a whole, a really good tournament for me to beat Renimo Willili, Noor Shabini and then Sarah Jane Perry in the final. Um, really good tournament for me and one that obviously I'd recommend uh, the, the Noor El Shabini match in that 2017 semi-final I came back from 2-0 down against as well so uh, that's a great one to watch uh, yeah um, that th those two stick out I think particularly um, let me think if I can think of anything else um, the World Series finals in Dubai I beat Noor El Shabini 3-0 in the final um, that was in 2017 as well I think so that was a great match too but all of my matches in Dubai played really well both years in a row 2016 and 2017 so um yeah I'd look look at them um last question then what are the things that you're finding hardest about the lockdown oh, I'm actually really enjoying it I mean um keeping myself busy at the moment I mean we're only back end of week week two I guess so still got quite a few jobs to do and um I guess the, the hardest thing is kind of that routine, that making sure I get to bed at night when I'm like, oh, what have I got to get up for in the morning? Like I just end up watching TV and, um, you know, just just making sure that I'm like sticking to my structure really. Um, I, think, I think actually the hardest thing is not being able to see my friends and family, particularly my family. Um, live quite close to my mom and, um, you know, see her normally at least three or four times a week. Um, 
my dad lives like an hour away so it's always nice to kind of you know see him whenever I can and yeah just just missing friends and family but having um you know FaceTime and group kind of evenings with friends is really nice as well so trying to make the most of it and do things that I've never done before uh so that's it for the question. So I had a few uh, funny comments come in as well. Um, why did I retire so early from squash? I'm 36. It's actually not that early. Um, you are the best squash player. How do I be like you? Just follow all the advice I just set and don't when we can solo and um, like, I guess kind of what I like is um, stick to the things that you said you'd do when when you long after you said you'd do them is a really good saying for me and that worked throughout my career um dinner after quarantine if it's on you why not <laughs> um so that's it from me guys obviously we've done wow half an hour there on questions and stuff so hopefully you found it helpful um if nothing else i've wasted half an hour of your isolation time listening to me ramble on um i'd love to do another one i found the questions really interesting and if they're helpful in any way, um, then let me know, comment below or just uh, message me on social media. It's really nice to hear from people at the moment and um, yeah, maybe we can do another one in the future. And if not, check out the videos. I'm going to upload a few more training videos over the weekend and um, yeah, have a good weekend everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy and look after each other. All right, bye.